What's up guys, my name is Andy. In this video, I'm gonna be installing a new wideband air fuel gauge in my classic Mustang. I'm gonna be getting this carb dialed in pretty soon, and this is a great tool to have installed to keep an eye on the air fuel ratio as we go through and dial in the carb. Let's uh, head over to the bench real quick and take a look at what comes in the box. So the model that I have here is the Autometer 3370. Now there's lots of model, there's lots of different designs that Autometer makes, there's lots of brands out there. There's, there's cheaper stuff, there's more expensive stuff. I went with this because it matches the gauges that I have in my car, that sport compact style, the same needle color and the, and the face color and everything. So it just matches what I've got. You can use whatever you want, I just chose this because of that. This is not gonna be installed with my gauges in the, in the instrument clusters. It's less critical that this matches everything, but I figured I'd just go with this because I've had, I've had pretty good luck with autometers so we'll, we'll run with them so in this box what's nice about this particular gauge is it already includes the o2 sensor and this right here this is, can be a hundred hundred and fifty dollar piece just by itself so it's something that look for when you're going to get an air fuel gauge great if they include one of these because you know it's going to match up with what you have but this is a standard replacement this is a kind of a i don't want to say it's an industry standard but the the thread pitch in here and everything is this this plug design this is just a very common plug uh setup so and then in here i got the gauge itself this is a two and a sixteenth style it comes with with this cup that you can use to mount it uh, in the car, but I'm gonna use one of these types of uh, mount systems because I'm gonna where I'm gonna mount in the car. I don't wanna. I could just put this in there like so, and then I mount it where I want, and, and it'll be perfect. All right, so what else do we have in here? Instructions, we'll look at that in a second. So here's the wiring harness and something to think about because you're gonna feed this through your firewall, I'm gonna, you need to do something that, you know that you can at least get this plug through there. I guess you could deep pin this if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna get a grommet that this will fit through and then keep a tight enough wrap around this and then I can just feed that through the firewall and, and not have to worry about this end. Of course, this end will just match with that. So then you've got the harness for the light there. And then the last part is the instructions. And then what's great about this too if you don't have a bung already welded in your exhaust system, they include one, which is which is great that they have this. I happen to have that. In fact, I have two bungs, one on each side of the the, the H pipe that I have on my car. So I'm not I don't need this, but it's great that they include it. Oh, look, see they've got that. Oh, I might just use that right there. That might be perfect. This uh, this grommet right here, I think will do what I needed to do for uh, for the firewall. And then we've got the instructions here. And the important part about these instructions. If you, what's great about this is if you were going to do any kind of data logging, or maybe you have an older car that doesn't have a setup where you can get a good 12 and a half volt signal, they kind of show you different ways you can wire this up. For my build, all I'm gonna need to worry about is the red wire, which we're gonna put on a switch circuit so that it's only on when the car is on. We're gonna need the ground, the black wire, and then the white wire just turns the, the light on for the gauge when we're in the car. So those are the only three that I need to worry about on my setup. But the nice thing is that they have it kind of, you know, outlined here for the, depending on your application. Great, so this is pretty much it. I do like that I don't need to buy anything else. Yeah, I did need to buy this bracket here to, to, to mount it, but they don't know how you're gonna do it in your car, so this works out pretty good. Other than that, I just need to figure out where I wanna come through on the firewall. Let me show you real quick where I'm gonna put this in the car. So as I mentioned, I'm not gonna be putting it in the gauge cluster. I've got that full of gauges and I'm good there. I don't wanna do anything here. I like this radio block off plate. This kind of, it's a OEM block off plate. I like that. I don't wanna put anything on top. Up here, I don't want to be drilling into the dash. And I thought about putting it down here. A lot of people will put those gauges down here, especially when they have like a pack of two or three of them. It's a great place to store the gauges because it's not in the way of anything. However, I don't know if I'm going to be doing an air conditioning system down the road. I would really like to. It gets hot where I'm at. So that's where I need to put that, that AC unit. So this would be in the way. So the next best thing is we're going to put it in the glove box. And I think uh, I'm going to move this hazard switch because that's not even plugged in. And I'm just going to install this right here. And the nice thing is, is that... When this, this is closed, it's still gonna be working, but you won't see it. And I don't need to be focused on that gauge at all times. It'll be great for tuning, and it's great to get a status of, the, of the, how the car is running, but I don't need to see that every day. You know, I got the important gauges over here that I need to see when I'm driving. Uh, but this one just tucked away in the glove box, I think it'll be a perfect place to put it out of the way, but I can just fold this down and, and get a glance at it. I think I'm also gonna angle it, kind of like how this, oh, well, that's not supposed to be angled, but because there's only one screw in there. Uh, but if I put this in there and I can angle it over just a little bit, I keep an eye on it and then just close that when I'm done. Cool. All right, so now I got to find a place to come through on the firewall. So depending on, you know, if you've got a, if you don't have a heater installed in your car, of course, it's going to make it really easy because you're not going to have stuff in the way. But because that heater system is there with the motor and the whole heater box, it actually takes up quite a bit of space all the way over here to where these heater tubes are going in. Uh, for the coolant to the heat exchanger in the heater box. So I know that I need to be at least past this 
kind of bend here in the firewall. I need to be over here and somewhere in this area. And the higher the better, because then you're not going to see it when you're sitting in the car and you really can't see much when, you know, once it's up behind the dash. So somewhere in here would be a good place, but I also don't want to just have a wire poking through right in the middle of the firewall. I'm going to have to look around and kind of see, you know, you've got the harness that's coming in over there. You can kind of take a look and see what I've got. I might, that screw coming out right there, that might be someplace I can come in through firewall. Uh, the wiring harness is long enough, so you don't need to worry about the wire length. And you, you're not going to be able to see it. We'll have to get the car jacked up, but you can see that bolt right there for where the H-pipe bolts up to the bottom of my uh, shorty headers. Right on the bottom side of that tube, there is a bong, and there's the same thing on the, on the driver's side over there. So I'm just going to, basically the, the sensor is going to be right there, and the wiring will just come up along the bell housing, and then I'll just come up into the firewall here and tuck it in nice and put some loom on there and make it look good. So, all right, let's uh, let's get into that. So using the grommet that they included, this is a one inch grunt. Well, the hole inside the slot there is one inch. So I need to get multi-bit uh, set up and I can drill a hole into the firewall. We'll put this in there. In fact, we'll install this over the over that first and then we can clip it into the wall. Let's get that done. So I'll use one of these guys to get the hole started and then we'll get this uh, larger one. And pro tip, if you put a mark like I did with this black Sharpie on the one inch circle, uh, then you don't have to worry about guessing, you know, how many steps it is or whatever. We can just see it as we're, as we're drilling the hole. All right, so I think I found that the hole, I'm gonna use this hole as a starter hole that was already there in the firewall. I don't know what it's for, but I'm not using it for anything. I'm definitely not gonna hit this. We're gonna be good. So we'll just start there with that hole. You know, I created quite a, quite a lip in there. This is where you're gonna wanna take a, a file or something and come in here and clean up these edges, but it, Probably easier to do from the inside. Now that we got the hole cut for this grommet, I think we can go ahead and put it on this wire harness. And again, what we want to do, uh, we're going to have probably most of this harness is going to be up inside the car. I guess if you were savvy enough, well, I'm really messing this up. <laughs> uh, you could shorten this one. Man, this is. Whew. You could shorten this wire up and repin everything and be in a spot where you don't have a bunch of extra wire. But I don't know down the road if I'm going to leave that gauge in the glove box, if I'm going to move it into a pod of gauges. So the nice thing is, is I'm just going to leave the wire lengths what they are and just zip tie them up in place. And that'll be sufficient for now. Uh, just get everything hooked up. Okay, we got to get this guy over this. There we go. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll feed this in through the firewall in the engine bay and we'll just feed this in. And actually all of these wires are gonna be inside the car, these colored wires. And this would just be what's left over uh, sitting. This will go all the way down to the O2 sensor. So there's a little bit of slop in there. That's, I guess you could put a bunch of electrical tape on there and just kind of fill up that hole, but I think we're gonna be fine. Now, I think the next thing, let's check up the car and, and get this guy installed. So now we've got the car safely up on jack stands, we can go after the, the bung that we've got here already in my exhaust pipe. Remember I was saying in that H-pipe I have, there's one on this side and then there's one on the, on the driver's side as well. But we're just going to use the passenger side, partly because there's a lot going on over here. And this one's just easier to get to on the passenger side. So we're just going to do that one. So, um, <laughs> truth, I did have to put a little heat on this to get this guy to loosen up. It was stuck pretty good, but uh, I'm able to unscrew it now. And putting this guy in, uh, we just need to take this plastic uh, safety cap or whatever you call this on here because this is kind of a sensitive instrument, so we don't want things banging around on it. And there's already some, uh, I don't know, some anti-seize or whatever you call that that's on the threads here, which is great. And this is a standard thread, so you don't have to worry about, you shouldn't have to worry about finding one of these that will fit because these are, not only did one come with the kit if you didn't have one, but if it's on your exhaust, there's probably the, the correct thread. And this is a metric thread. I think it's... Nah, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to make an assumption there, but I know that it's metric. Get this guy nice and snug on here. All right. Now I'm going to feed this up through and uh, see these little plastic clips. Sometimes, depending on what transmission you have, there may be a hole that you can plug that into that'll just kind of strain relief the wire but i don't have any that so i might have to zip tie it to something up here but what i need to do is i need to drop the, the wire harness down from up top and then i can plug this in and then we'll feed this up and get this thing secured real quick before i feed this down there this is the wire harness and what i had done is i just went through and just taped it up a little bit just kind of got it prepared for what i want to do we're gonna 
feed this through the firewall and all this stuff, and then we'll remember we'll end up with this grommet in the firewall. But I need to feed this down and plug this into the uh, the O2 sensor. Also, uh, on this setup here, I don't I don't want to cut these wires off because I don't know if I'm going to do any kind of data logging down the road. So I'm just going to bundle them up like this, tape them off. They're there if I need them, but there's no reason to just cut them off. I mean, I guess you could always add wires to it, but I'm just going to leave it like that, and then we'll uh, we'll feed this through the firewall. So we're going to route this wire down back here and paying attention to where it's going so you can route it behind whatever wires and stuff you've got in place. Just take your time on that and, and just so you're not, you know, getting knots around stuff and routing in a way that's not going to work. All right, now that we got this fish down here, there is only one way that this goes. There's a little tab on here, so it does make it pretty simple. And then also there's a little buttons here on the side that align with the traction here and it's kind of slick how it kind of clicks into place. There, just like that. Now that's attached, and we need to find a way to get this to sit up higher so it's not dangling down below. So to just take a little bit of the strain relief off the wire, there's a tab here on the side of the transmission. I just drilled a hole in that tab. Uh, I don't know if I should have done that. I mean, there's that one back there, but it's too far back, so uh, that tab, you know, it's not going into the transmission. So anyway, drilled a hole there, put a zip tie in it. That at least holds it in place so it's not, you know, bouncing around, dangling down below the car. Um, putting a heat shield on here might not be too bad of a deal. This, that's what this this is here for. But uh, anyways, now I think we can drop the car and go up top and finish this through uh, going through the firewall. Now we can finish running this in the firewall. All right, so that's gonna work. Uh, I probably should get some of that black loom stuff, but I don't have any of this size, so I'm gonna have to get that. But at least that's tucked out of the way. It's not really resting on anything. So now it's all inside the car from here. So now I've got it routed underneath the dash, and I've got it poked up through here, through the glove box. This is the harness that's gonna plug into the back of the gauge. I'm gonna remove this out of the way, probably put the gauge somewhere right in wherever this is screwed in or something very close, because I'm not, I'm not using that anyway, so I'm just gonna put it right there. And then, uh, for the wiring, I didn't really show much, and I get kind of a little bit of a, an embarrassing rat's nest. The so wire's underneath there, so this is about as far down as I want the camera to go. Um, but I just tucked everything underneath there and zip-tied everything in place and got it set up so that we can finish this out over here. All right, now this is mounted in place. Let's do a little test fit and just make sure that this thing's sitting far enough back from... Yeah, that's good. It's not touching anything. That's what we want. And then we need to put this backing piece on and there's these little star washers and the the nuts that come with this set all right the last thing to do is just to plug it in which we can do here there now it's in place everything's done in here i'm gonna go ahead and leave this open because the last thing i need to do is put in the fuse so they tell you to put in a, to a switched source I've got a few distribution block here that's coming off of a relay that is triggered when the car's turned on. So this whole thing is live when the car's on. So I've got a couple things plugged in here. So we'll just plug there that fuse in place. Now that's good to go. So we can put this cap back on. All right, we're good there. So now the next step is to uh, turn the car on and see if it works. It does say it takes a second for it to heat up and in the instructions it tells you what the needle will do as it's warming up because the gauge, the sensor has to be warm for it to work, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and fire up the car and uh, see if it works. I think we should go for a drive and see how it looks. All right, guys, here we go. Let's get on the highway. Just cruising. 
cruising about 60 miles an hour in fifth gear and you can see the gauge is hovering just over 13 so we're running a little richer but this is where I don't know this is where I need to learn about where I need to be uh, for um, for uh, you know my air fuel ratio on on cruise versus power versus all that stuff so that's some of the stuff I'm gonna learn That's, a, that's an air fuel gauge installed, right? So you guys saw at the beginning uh, when I fired up the car that the, the needle fluctuated between eight and nine and that's, it's telling you that it's getting up to temp that the, that the gauge or the sensor is waiting for it to get up to temp. And then it's supposed to go all around and, well, in my case, it read right, you know, right away what it was, what it was, uh, what the air fuel ratio was. But when you're idle and particularly when the car is cold and I got the choke on, that's not a good gauge of, of how the car's doing. I mean, it tells you some information, but really what we're looking for is when this car's nice and warmed up and everything's happy, that's when we're gonna be wanting to pay attention to those, to those numbers. So when I got on the highway and you get on it, you can see that I'm running, you know, in the tens there, I'm, I'm running rich, um, but that's expected because these carburetors come rich from, from you know, Holly. So it's safer that way. It's, it's a little wasteful in fuel. You're leaving a little bit of power on the table, but it's safe until we can dial it in and that's what I wanted. So like I said, I gotta have that gauge installed. So when I take it to my tuner and we start dialing in this carb, we can use that as a tool to help perfect my carb and get it where it needs to be. So yeah, and so then, and how does that air fuel gauge work? Now that's a whole nother video and how to interpret what you're seeing based on your throttle, you know, when you're on it versus when you're idling and all that kind of stuff, that would be a whole nother video, but at least you guys know how to install one. And the simplest thing, I mean, we got, you saw that we had that wire for the, the sensor itself. We just fed it up through the firewall and, and plugged it in. But the, uh, the only the wires you need are a switched power source, 12 volt power source, and a ground. Uh, I did not hook up the light for this. I don't, with it being in the glove box and it being closed a lot of time, I don't, I guess I could, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be driving it at nighttime where I need that light on. So I don't know if I'm going to wire that up yet. I haven't decided, although I don't know if I want to leave that gauge there. So that's a whole nother conversation. So I might figure that out later, but at least we're installed and you can see how simple it is to do. So, all right guys, that takes care of that. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I appreciate it because it helps my channel out. And we'll see you in the next one.